welcome to the Remedy Fibers podcast, a podcast about knitting and crochet hosted by me, Jillian. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returner, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. So today we have a quick check-in. I have some finished objects, some works in progress. But this is more of a chat, a quick check-in, just because the projects that I chose to work on are a little bit time-consuming. So it's going to take me a few weeks, a few months to work through them. And hopefully you're here for the progress. So if you're interested, stay tuned. But if you're new here, I live in Northern California with my husband and dog Benny. I love everything yarn-related and I hope you stay for my yarn journey. So first we'll start off with a finished object. This week I made a frog, the frog pattern by Claire Garland. And I'm so happy with it. This is the third time that I've made this pattern. And I like the addition of how the mohair looks. I'll insert a picture of how my first two frogs looked. But I like the mohair, the fuzziness. It gives it just a certain kind of look to it. I also like the little belly part and this time I included pipe cleaners in the arm part and in the legs so now it's bendable. The thing is that it didn't reach up to the front part of the arm so only like the first part of the arm is bendable so at least it can sit or have its legs propped up if it was on a chair. So I'm actually looking for a wire to make it a little bit easier to make the arms and legs bendable because the pattern makes it look so easy but when I tried to do the pipe cleaners it wasn't working too great. I also tried to use one of those wires that come with electronics and that wasn't working at all. So if you have any recommendations about how to use the wire properly for the eye cord that would be a great help let me know down below. But isn't he so cute? I really love this pattern. I'm gonna make, I have two more frog requests. I'm gonna make two more frogs but this this one's going to my brother over in Florida and this is the second frog that I've made him. This past week I have went to an event that was not so May and for some reason I misread the flyer and thought it was March. So it was an excuse to go to the yarn store and that's where I picked up my frog yarn. This is Rowan DK and then some mohair. I think next time I want to go with the green mohair because it will blend better with the green or a green mohair and a white mohair but mohair is expensive and since it's such a small project I know I'm not gonna go through all of this mohair so I felt gray was a good color combo to work with both colors here my next finished object is not yarn related but since this is a podcast I figured I'd share this is a painting that I made yesterday actually and it was really nice and relaxing I hope I can take a painting class soon but as of right now, this is watercolor and I just went to town with it. So even though I love arts and crafts, painting is something that kind of sits on the back burner just because knitting and crochet is my love. So I thought it was really cute. I just wanted to share it with you and maybe you can tap into your creativity, your painting side as well. So if you tuned into last week's episode, I mentioned a make-along that I'll be hosting called the Sunshine 2023 Make-Along and it's for either knitting or crochet. So you can enter on Instagram using hashtag sunshine2023mal or I'll link the Ravelry thread down below where you can post your finished objects to enter for prizes or get some project inspiration. So originally I said I was going to be making a sunflower blanket but now that I've looked at it and done it, this can go either way. It can be a sunflower sweater, a sunflower dress or a sunflower blanket so let me show it to you so you can kind of see where I'm going with so this is how the blanket is turning out I started seaming it today but I still have more squares that I want to make and originally I was going to make a blanket out of this and it will still be a really cute blanket but then I thought if I put it on my shoulder I kind of was seeing how it would look and do two panels this panel and another panel it can be a short sleeve cardigan or I can also do a drop sleeve and add more squares to make a long sleeve. But do I want a bulky acrylic sweater? Will I use it? And I feel like sunflowers is a great item for spring or summer. And having a bulky weight cardigan might be too hot. But it is really cute. It is so cute. Let me know what you think. Should it stay a blanket? Should I experiment with a short sleeve cardigan, long sleeve? And then I was thinking... This might not be a great idea for the climate that I'm in, but maybe one of my friends might want it just because it's so cute. Like something that I would want to give away or gift away in the future if, in case it doesn't serve my wardrobe or my weather climate. 
So this is how it looks so far. So if you're entering in the Sunshine Make Along, just to let you know it's any project that incorporates sunflower. It can be a bag, it can be socks, it can be earrings, it can be a bandana. Pretty much anything that includes a sunflower, you can enter into our giveaway either through Instagram or Ravelry. So my next work in progress, I have not worked on it. This is my Isabel Kramer Beaufort 5 cardigan. And the reason why I haven't been working on it is because I have it on the computer, not printed out, and I highlight where I'm at in the pattern. And I'm just in a very repetitive part that I can't memorize. So I need to sit down and put mental energy towards it but right now where i'm at in my crafting is i want no thinking this pattern i already have memorized so it's just so easy to kind of take it out watch tv relax i don't really have that much mental energy that i want to be thinking about what i'm doing so that's why i'm really gravitated towards this crochet project so maybe i'll continue this and push myself towards it but as of right now it hasn't really been calling to me but it is a great pattern and I love it so much. It's just something that takes more thinking. And right now, I don't want to do too much thinking. My next work in progress, if you've seen my last episode, you probably would have saw this already. But I have done a gauge swatch for the Andre Amari DRK Everyday Cow using my hand spun. So if you've been watching my Spin to Sweater series, that one had to change because I don't have enough yarn for a sweater, so it's Spin to Shawl. But if you've been watching that series, you've been watching my progress on getting this from wool to hand spun yarn. And this is the gauge swatch and I struggled a little bit. It took me a long time to work on this gauge swatch for a few reasons. I used the US 6 recommended needle and I was not mini gauge and normally I'm a tight knitter so I had to go up a needle size so I tried the US 7. I also didn't meet gauge so I said I have to go down to a US 5 and that's what worked. Now I finally have met gauge. The only thing is I want to make sure to wet block this to see if it grows and it changes. This also is half of the gauge swatch. Andre Amari does big swatches and I just didn't want to use my hand spun for that and I think after this blocks I'm going to unravel it and add it back to this just because we're limited with yardage because it is hand spun but this is yarn that I picked up this is fiber that I picked up from Stitches West by Goody Supply Co and this is the Funfetti colorway I don't believe she has the pink color anymore but she definitely has the brown so it's the same kind of color full tweedy bits in it but it's brown instead of hot pink but this is going to be a cow because I'm not going to have enough for a sweater and I don't want to do anything wool with a tank top just because I'm going to be overheating in that. So this project is a little bit slower just because it took me a long time. I think it took two days to finally meet gauge and find the needle size that was going to work. So just a quick update, our giveaway winner reached out to me and her gift finally arrived, so I'm really excited. Thank you so much for everyone who entered in the giveaway. And if you do enter into the Sunshine Make Along, there will be giveaway prizes for that. They will be soon announced in a few weeks. So for the longest of time, I've been anti-TikTok. I refuse, I don't want to, I've been on a social media break. The platform that I use the most is YouTube. But I finally decided to just try it at least, and I decided to make a TikTok for Remedy Fibers. So if you look at my account, it's remedy.fibers, so a period between the words. Because I did have an account, but because I made it through my Instagram, that feature no longer works, so I'm locked out of it. So I made a new one, and I'll be posting similar to what I post on shorts to TikTok to kind of just explore. And I know that the algorithm is really strong, and I wanted to make sure that I did not go down the reality TV TikTok or the drama TikTok because that's my guilty pleasure. So I started liking all crochet knitting videos and somehow my algorithm is crochet top. I don't know why knitting is not there but it's all crochet videos which I'm not complaining about. Thank you very much. So I decided to go down the rabbit hole and try to limit myself but it's so addicting. I could spend hours on that thing and not be productive. So I love all the inspiration that comes from crochet top. But one thing that I have been seeing is bouquet flowers crochet bouquet flowers so that's something that I want to talk about today I don't know if you've seen it but this is something that I want to make especially that Mother's Day is coming up in May and I want to make this for my mom so I have a few patterns 
most of them are paid for patterns and one of them is a free pattern but i'll talk about them here with you to see if that's something that you might be interested in as well so the first two patterns that i want to talk about is a designer called Fibita marta and she has a lavender and tulip bouquet pattern both of these are paid for patterns and i believe four dollars each they are just so cute the next pattern that i saw is by designer linji kang and it is the daisy bouquet i think it's really cute it looks pretty simple and i think a combination of the lavender tulips and daisies will look beautiful lastly this is a free crochet bouquet pattern and it is from designer Nastasia and it is called crochet flower rose bouquet I also saw videos of people putting bouquets together with the brown paper and the twine making it look as realistic as if you bought it from a florist shop but comment down below have you seen these crochet bouquets all over TikTok all over YouTube would you make one let me know down below lastly I wanted to talk to you about a letter writing club that I I'm in and I actually found it in one of the community groups here on Ravelry so if you're interested I'll link the group down below so you can check it out but you can join birthday card swaps postcard swaps sometimes there's even yarn swaps I haven't joined any of those but upcoming there is a earth day swap where you can gift a cotton dish cloth to someone and get one in return and you can even put if you want to send only to the US or international so right now I'm in a year-long birthday writing club where you get all of the months all of the addresses and each month depending on how many people are in that birthday month you send a card to so there's about I want to say 20 plus people in this club and so when it's your birthday you can get up to 20 birthday cards so I'm really excited for the month of November I can't wait to get mine but I've been sending mine monthly since the start of January and I even sent a birthday card to someone in Finland I got into the letter writing club because as a kid I always loved the idea of a pen pal even though I didn't have one and I randomly stumbled upon this group on Ravelry and it was so exciting. I've done the Valentine's Day card swap where I sent out a few Valentine's Day cards and got some in return. I did the St. Patrick's Day card swap and I also entered into the Earth Day one because I want to gift a dishy cloth and get one in return as well. But if you're interested definitely come join us. It's been so fun. Sometimes I get stickers in the mail, tea in the mail one time someone from Canada even sent me a maple leaf from Canada and when it came in the mail it smelled just like maple syrup I thought that was so fun and just little goodies here and there depending on what swap we're doing so I wanted to show you some things that I picked up this week for my letter writing club before I would go to the post office for one stamp two stamps this week actually I think it was two weeks ago I purchased the black heritage 46 in a series stamps and I think this is a book of stamps so this is how many postcards I've sent out and the person on here is Ernest J. Gaines so recently I received my first postcard ever for St. Patrick's Day and I never received a postcard before I never even seen one before and it was really cool that you don't even need an envelope you just put a stamp on it and send it out so I decided to get some postcards so the first postcard that I got is from a black owned bookshop called Underground Books and so this is the bookshop located in Sacramento this is where my little stamp will go their address oh I can't wait to send this out just because I've never sent a postcard out before and I think it's really beautiful the next postcard that I got I got it because I like the colors and now Bright told me I can't send it to anybody because what it says on it is very strange and I didn't I didn't read it I just thought it was cute so this is what the postcard looks like and it says Sacramento a sunny place and I'm like oh perfect i need that but i didn't keep reading when i bought it so it says a sunny place for shady people so i just don't think that would be funny i don't think it's funny if i was to get that's kind of weird and now i have no idea who i'm gonna send this postcard so if you want a postcard like this for me let me know and i can send it to you just because it's kind of creepy and i guess if you don't have a sense of humor i don't really think it's funny but i guess it's supposed to be funny i can send it to you or maybe I'll just include it in a letter. No, I think that's weird if you get a if you get a postcard like this. <laughs> Moving on. So I also picked these two cards up from the Black Owned Bookshop and it's from Underground Books. And this one is just maybe watercolor, maybe acrylic painting of a woman. And it's by artist Monica Crooks. 
And the next one I have is from an artist called Ames Moon, made in St. Louis, Missouri. I just think they're so pretty. So these cards are blank, so I can send them for a birthday, I can send them for one of my letter writing clubs, but it's really fun. I love sending mail. I love sending little stamps on the mail. I love it so much. But that's all that I have for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. And I also hope that you and your family are happy, healthy, and safe. I hope to talk to you next week and take care. Bye.